to show you a little bit of real time when I'm working on the process of this drawing. Sadly, I'm going to have to postpone the entire project of the video. I don't know how many days, not that long, because the drawing is going to be finished hopefully today, maybe tomorrow. So that a few things has happened this week that I had to take a break from the drawing. I just wanted to show you a little bit so you don't have to wait too long. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process here in real time instead of speed it up since the video is going to be time lapsed of the entire process. So I just wanted you to know that I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to <laughs> upload this project in any day now. It's just going to be a little bit past the time that I expected it to be finished. But also I don't wanna I don't wanna feel stressed when I'm working on this process because then the finished result won't look as good. So I'd rather postpone a couple of days so the finished result will look great instead of trying to finish it in time and if I stress through the process then I won't be pleased with the finished result. Might be interesting for you to see a little bit of how I work in layers with different colors in real time. How fast I'm working. It's hard to actually know how fast you're actually working. See the entire process in time lapse. Because right now I know it looks like a complete mess. Can't even see any realism. Guess this is what it looks like when you're working with pastels. It looks like a mess at first. But then when you add the finishing touches it all blends together. And all the realism shows through. I think that I feel that more of the realism actually starts to show as soon as you start to apply all these highlights. Obviously it's still looking a bit like a mess. For me it's easier to just work back and forth between adding shadows and adding highlights and then focus on adding more and more of the depth. That's how I work in layers and it's easier to see the realism or the details come to life for me. It's all about taking your time. Finding the right shades, knowing when you're supposed to apply them in what order. Sometimes you have to go back and forth. Like I started with the black and now I'm going back in with the black to increase the shadows, bring back more contrast. And then I have to go over with a brighter shade, a reddish purple. This is supposed to be brown leather, but all the reflections of the light sources make it look a bit more with bluish tint to it. So it has more of reddish purple shade. And obviously here we have these, I think they're rivets and they're metal. That's obviously a bit dramatic or intense. But I'm going to blend it out. It's supposed to have more of a, what is it? It's supposed to be a greenish tint. I think this one can work. Yeah, I'm applying each layer with a loose, soft pressure. So it's easier for me to blend. I can go back with the black. That one should be this turquoise. It has a greenish, but I have to be very careful so it's not too bright and intense. Just a tiny highlight of a hint of green there to make sure that this part stands out more. It's supposed to be like this part of the belt goes in underneath here. So I have to make sure that this looks like it's on top of this one and not the other way around. Even though I'm working from a reference picture, I also find it to be a bit of artistic freedom. I have the reference picture as a guide and then I apply it the way I feel it looks great. Even though I'm going for realism, I still have a bit of artistic freedom since this part here is so tiny. If you compare it to my hand and my pencils, I can't get every tiny detail, but as many details as I can and on this scale this paper that I'm using. I have to apologize if I sound a bit tired or off. So a lot of things that have been going on these last couple of weeks, especially this week. It's nothing to do with the actual drawing. This is my stress relief. So now finally I have some things done so I can focus on other things that is less stressful for me, like this project. I also want to finish this one so I can start with other projects that I have planned. I'm very excited to see the finished result of this drawing. So far it looks very cool. So I'm looking forward to show you guys the finished result as soon as I'm done editing the video. Obviously I'm going to cut this video a lot because I'm only going to show you the parts where I'm talking. So it's going to jump a lot during the process but you're going to see the full process process in motion in the actual video. Some of you may already know what I'm working on if you recognize this belt, but I think some of you already knew when you saw some of the other sneak peeks that I made. 
This project has been a lot of fun, a lot of colors, a bit of a challenge. That's what I love. I don't want it to be too easy. I want to learn more, develop my skills as an artist, especially with working with colors. Because I used to work with a lot of graphite and charcoal for many years. But after a while you get so tired of just working in grayscale, so you want to try to work with a lot of colors. And I found that pencil pencils was the perfect medium for me, the way I work in layers. I think here is the part where the actual detail you're working on is going to come alive. The final step here is to add the highlights. Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth between some of these areas again. But it's only going to be me repeating myself, doing the same process, just to get the layers and the realism come through. More depth, more contrast. So I think I should start focusing on the belt buckle. So I can see that the darkest shade in the belt buckle has this bluish tone. It's supposed to be a grayish metal, but like I said, the reflections of all these colors of the surroundings gives this bluish green hue. So obviously this is not going to be a gray tone buckle. It's going to have blue tones and some. You can see some green and it's a bit dirty, so some parts here have some brown tones. So I'm working from the darkest color that I can see and then I go over with brighter and brighter colors until I finally add the brightest colors and it's finally going to give you the illusion that this is metal. I think this part there should be maybe it's more army green instead of brown. Yeah, it's a bit of an army green but it has a hint of a brown tone also. Maybe this. And then I go over with black just to bring back the rivets of the belt buckle and then I'm going to add a highlight so they look like rivets instead of just two holes sharpening up the outer details so I just had to sharpen my pencil for this highlight part the way for anyone who is curious I'm using Durban some Geoconda Geoconda has a lot of these bright colors. They're very soft, so they're easy to break, but they have a wide range of bright, bright colors. But I found a Dura one, and the other ones that I have are here. <laughs> Sorry. Faber Castell Pit Pencil. And these are harder pastel pencils, so they don't break as easy as the Geoconda. Most of the time I use Geoconda pencils for all these highlights that have these bright colors. Some of the bright colors that I have are also Derwin. And most of the under layers are pit pastels that are a bit harder. So at the moment I have all of these just for this belt. It's just so I have easy access to all these different shades if I need to use different colors to blend in to get the right shade. Let's start with outlining the entire belt buckle. I may have to use another pencil to blend a bit because this looks very shocky. I think that Derwent are also a bit soft. Not as soft as the Geoconda, but it has a tendency to break off these dust particles a lot easier. So that what makes it so hard to actually get a sharp outline. When I'm trying to blend in all of these colors that I had as the underlayer with this pencil to create a brighter shade so it looks like a closer match to the reference picture and then I can go back with black just to sharpen up here again and then I can go over with yeah this is giving me a closer color match just soft pressure but I would add too much pressure I would have applied too much color and it would be, give me the wrong shade it wouldn't blend as well because I find that soft pressure is what you use when you want to blend colors and harder pressure is when you want to give a bright color application of the pencil that you are using. You can use a paper stump if you want to. I'm gonna try and see if it's going to work. They can blend or smudge the colors a bit because I'm not using a paper that is recommended. It's not going to push the colors into any textures of the paper. But it can blend the colors out a bit, but it's going to make it look darker. So I can see if I can try and... I think I used the Yoconda white pencil. I'm going to try and apply it in a light pressure. Let's see if I can maybe blend it with the other colors to give a brighter shade. Mm. It's like it's too soft, it's breaking off. I actually have the Faber-Castell Pit Pencil in white, so I tried that one instead, because it's a harder pencil, so it won't break off these particles. I think it's actually helping me to brighten up this area. It's softer application than the... <laughs> That's some kind of ironic, that the 
harder pencil <clears throat> gives a softer finish while the soft pencils gives a rough finish. That seemed to work. But I think I have to go back with a bit of a darker shade just to blend out this white shade. I could go back with a blue. I think this one that looks a bit more like um, navy blue. Yeah, navy blue. It's not royal blue, it's navy blue. It's only for blending a bit. So this is what I have to do. I have to go back and forth, back and forth between brighter colors, darker colors, brighter colors, darker colors until I finally get the right blend application shade. The paper stump, this is just a rice paper stump, they, um, they soften the details but it, sometimes it can brighten up and sometimes it darkens, it's, they are a bit unreliable, especially for the paper that I'm using. Like I said in my other video, my German Shepherd pastel drawing, I'm going to mention the video and I'm going to upload it. what paper I'm using and why it's not really recommended for working with realism. As you can see how, how much I have to go back and forth here to finally get some sort of a realistic finish. If I look at the viewfinder of the camera it looks like I have captured the realism because when you look at it further away for me it's like I'm working so close up to the details that I actually can't see the finished result should add some kind of highlights so they look more like rivets. It's a bit more dramatic than the actual reference but I don't really care. Do it my way. I wanted it to look like a artistic drawing instead of a hyper realistic painting. So I a slight pressure with my white pencil just to give a hint of a shiny highlight or a shiny detail. So then I can add some highlight here to enhance the fact that this one is going underneath here and this one is on top. I think that's good enough for me for now. Might have to go back and adjust a few details if I feel like it. I think I've got down all the basic shapes and colors. Mm -hmm. I think that's good enough for now. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process of me working on this drawing. A little bit of real time but I'm obviously cutting down the video so it won't be a half an hour long video. I have promised at first that I was going to upload the finished result of the uh, drawing and the video today. But like I said it was a lot of things that happened this week so I wasn't able to finish this drawing in time. And I actually want to take my time and not stress through the process to get it done. Like I said I might go back and uh, add more details, go back and between the shadows and the highlights. I'm not sure yet, it looks great right now. Obviously you're going to see the full version of this process in the upcoming video. Also all the rest of the painting here. This is just a bit of a sneak peek what you can expect to see in, in a couple of days. And like I said, this for me is my way to have a stress relief, to think about other things instead of the things that is going on in my life right now. But I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the process.